Hi everyone, this is Balash from Racing Brick. I'm sure you all remember this awesome LEGO idea set, the 213338 A-Frame Cabin. I did a detailed preview video on it when it was unveiled, but I didn't get an early review opportunity, so I thought I would do something different with it. I read in many comments online that it's very similar to another idea set, which is, surprisingly, still available even though it was released in 2019, the 21318 Treehouse. I thought it's a good opportunity to compare the two builds, what they offer, what are the similarities and differences, and which one I would recommend buying. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at the numbers. As I mentioned earlier, the Treehouse was released in 2019, it has 3036 pieces, and it comes from a time when idea sets weren't necessarily marked 18 plus and had nice colorful boxes. The current price on lego.com is 250 euros or dollars, but at the release it was only 200 bucks. Inside there are 21 numbered bags and 5 unnumbered ones with the leaves and the building instructions. The A-Frame Cabin was released this year, it has 2082 pieces, it is an 18 plus set with the usual design elements and costs 180 euros or dollars. It contains 20 numbered bags and one unnumbered one, as well as the envelope with the building instructions. The manuals clearly show how the approach has changed in the last 4 years. Here is this big colorful book, and here we have two separate manuals with a plain white background. I really miss those bright colors, but on the other hand, the artwork looks pretty cool here, and with two manuals you can share the building experience and build sections at the same time. The introduction for the treehouse is pretty short. It was the first set to include a large amount of sustainable pieces for the botanical elements. There is a page about Kevin Fieser, the fan designer, and another about Cesar Suarez, the Lego designer involved in the project. The other manual contains more details. It starts with an introduction to the concept of A-frame cabins, where and when they became popular. Then it introduces Andrea Latanzio, the fan designer who is a well-known custom builder under the nickname Norton74. Another page features the Lego designers involved in the project, and then the building can begin. I won't do a full building review for both sets today, but I will focus mainly on the A-frame cabin and its technical details and easter eggs, and use the treehouse for comparison. This is the base of the A-frame cabin, you can already see an easter egg here, Andrea is from Italy, so we have the national flag here, and there is also an acorn hidden next to it. At first I thought the brown thing next to it was a molehill, but apparently it's a cardboard box, a reference to a similar box from the Sanctum Sanctorum set, also designed by Justin Ramsden, who happened to work on this set as well. Then comes this amazingly creative assembly for the stone wall in the base, which is made of a large pile of Mjolnirs. The support structure is very cool. This is how both sides go in place and gets covered. The base of the treehouse is much larger and consists of many stack plates, some studied technic elements and two long beams in the middle. This is what the core of the tree looks like, with door frames inside, brackets supporting the brown cover elements on the sides, and some angled handlebars for smaller future parts. That's how it goes in place, it's a little difficult to get it lined up right and attach all the elements properly. Going back to the cabin, we have the front and rear walls in place, with a big bunch of details already been added. There will be many analog objects that represent the detached offline life in the forest, like the record player or the acoustic guitar. By the way, the cabinet from which the records protrude is built sideways, with brackets on the top, which is actually the side. I love the doormat, this is a recycled printed tile from the back of the red pickup truck. The small kitchen has plenty of detail on the other side as well, I love the stove and the innovative use of parts here and there, like the gun for the faucet or this black spoiler piece for the range hood. Here you can see how the paneling on the front and back will work and how the triangular shape will be formed. The irregularities of the wooden panels are constructed using legal building techniques, there are different supports added with sideways studs, brackets and layered pieces that give a very nice result of offset elements. Even more details added, we have various gams popping up here and there and other accessories. The typewriter with the color mesh table is a reference to the idea set, which also represents the offline world here. The printed sign above the door is from the medieval blacksmith set. Some fun details were added on the back with the outdoor shower. There's a soap and, well, you can decide if that's a towel or some other accessory used along with that shovel. Everything is properly attached by the way, very cool. The color scheme of the can is a nice nod to Octan, and as Andrea mentioned, it's also referenced by the LEGO designers to his cool custom garage builds. The front is also covered now and we get lots of little details. My favorite is the use of whip pieces for this rocking chair and the little camping stove next to it. 
Then comes this assembly with the tree and firewood that can be attached to the main building. The building technique for the logs is also very interesting, how they are built laterally and how the randomness is achieved. Here is the upper part with the bed and other small details. The printed picture on the wall is a reference to another of Andrea's buildings, the Blue Cottage. By the way, the small yellow vehicle on the shelf is a reference to the Caterham 7 Ideas set. Let's get back to the treehouse. The internal structure reminds me a lot of the Saturn V rocket, even if it's a bit more random. You really have to pay attention to the alignment of the elements though, the upper part had to be rebuilt here because of a small mistake. On the side of the tree there is a special printed plate with a quote and the fan designer's initials. Here is the finished upper floor of the A-frame cabin, which contains even more details and easter eggs. You can see the treehouse itself in a miniature form which is pretty awesome, and next to the bed is a camera that appears to have a high quality Canon L-series lens attached to it, as shown by the red ring. So the top floor is installed, and then comes the least interesting part of the build, the two identical roof sections. Pro tip, if the placement of the roof assembly seems to be wrong, you should check the position of the upper section, because it might be off. There you go, now everything is perfectly aligned. Here is the last section, this little stream with the two trees. There are lots of nice details here too, the otter, the butterfly and all the accessories. The trees look well, okay. Let's say it's already autumn and they have lost a lot of leaves, that's why they look like this. I understand that the original trees couldn't be included in the set because of their construction technique and the amount of parts they would have needed, but oh boy, they look much much better. Getting back to the treehouse, as you can see we skipped a few building steps, the different sections are basically done. There are three cabins built, and each of them is supported by a rather sturdy branch. Putting the cabin in place requires some alignment, but once it's there it cannot be easily knocked over. The parents' bedroom is full of details and accessories. My personal favorite is the reference to the ship in a bottle idea set with this tiny printed bottle. There's also an easter egg hidden under the bed, a pair of scissors which is a reference to the fan designer's profession. The kids have a bunk bed, I think that's a microscope on the table next to the flower under the glass dome, and more details on the other side. On the wall under the bunk bed hangs a kind of hidden treasure map, and in the base of the treehouse there is a corresponding hidden treasure. The bathroom is again full of details, there is a shower, a sink, and a toilet on the other side with a very eco-friendly green toilet paper roll. As I see, my very funny build helpers left an extra easter egg here. I'm pretty sure we should see clear water in the toilet instead of the green round tile, I guess someone forgot to flush it. The cabins are connected with stairs, they aren't very stable, but they serve their purpose. The arrangement of the doors seem to be a bit of a problem, I think we put them together correctly, but this one can only be opened so far because of the support for the stairs. The roof panels look similar, but the outside is a little different and the inside is color coded. You can find the same colors on the cabins, which makes them easier to position, so it's not that hard to find the right place. The top of the tree is connected with Technic pins and was probably the least exciting part of the build. So this is the completed build, it is huge and there's a lot of detail all around. We get an extra set of autumn leaves, which is a very nice idea, but replacing them is a real challenge since we have to practically rebuild the top part. So, here are the two built side by side with their corresponding minifigures. As you can see, the treehouse is much much bigger. We get four minifigures for each building, which is I think fine. I try to put the two sets side by side to feel the difference in size. The proportions are very different, but the piece count also shows that the treehouse has a lot more stuff in it. With an original price difference of only 20 bucks, we can see how the world and the economy have changed in 4 years and not for the better. As I mentioned earlier, the treehouse can be rebuilt with the yellow and orange leaves, but it's really not a quick swap. Other than that, there's no real variation possibilities. The cabin does not have much more flexibility either, although the side builds are removable and can either stand separately or form a single group of trees next to the house, which also looks appealing. We could see who wins the size game, but what about the details? I think it's more or less the same, because each build has tons of little details to discover, from that perspective, both are great. However, from an accessibility and playability perspective, there are differences. The designer of the treehouse clearly made an effort to make the cabins accessible with the removable treetop and roofs, but the cabins are still pretty small and the interior is difficult to access. I think the A-frame cabin does a better job of this. With the removable roof elements and the upper floor, the interior is definitely more accessible and playable. 
This may also be related to the design itself, but this one also seems sturdier. There are far fewer elements to accidentally knock off, and I think the tree house is meant more for display than play. How can I sum it up? Both are very nice builds and look great. In my opinion, the A-frame cabin is more balanced in terms of the building experience and playability. The tree house looks very impressive as a display piece and has lots of interesting building details, but the last part of the build feels repetitive and the option to swap out the leaves, while nice, but requires a lot of effort. So folks, let me know in the comments what you think of these two here, which one you bought or if you plan to buy any of them, let's talk about it. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications as more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.